Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use property wrappers in surf language. So sometimes when you are setting a property, you want some custom code to be fired. And that is where you can use property wrappers. So let's go ahead and create a very simple property wrapper that when it is applied to a property, it's going to change the casing of the property to uppercase. We're going to begin with creating a property wrapper. And the property wrapper itself is starts with at sign and then property wrapper. Next, we're going to create a structure. And this is actually our property wrapper, which is called upper. But you can obviously call this anything you want. You can call this uppercase, lowercase, or whatever. Now, one of the properties that are required in a property wrapper is called wrapped value. So let's go ahead and create that wrap value. And that will be the actual value inside the property wrapper. So the property wrapper is going to wrap a property and the actual value of the property will be accessed or can be accessed using wrapped value property. So wrap value of the property is going to return a string because we are going to be applying the upper property wrapper on string properties. We're going to have did set, which means that whenever we set the property wrapper, whenever we set this particular property wrapper to a value, then did set is going to get fired. And we will assign wrap value uppercase. So whatever the value is the property wrapper is wrapping, go ahead and call uppercase function, which is a built-in function in Swift, on it, and then return the value and put the value right in up the wrap value property again. The next thing we need to do is we need to create initializer for our wrap value or for our property wrapper. This will be string. And we will go ahead and call wrap value dot uppercase. Now the reason that we are calling uppercase over here is that whenever you are creating an instance, so if I do something like this, wrap value, then since I'm using did set, it is not going to invoke the did set modifier when we are setting the property inside the initializer. That is just how did set actually works. If you set a property, which we are doing it over here, we are setting the wrap value property with a new wrap value, then the did set is not going to get fired since you are setting it inside the constructor or initializer. Now there are some ways that you can still fire did set by wrapping it in a differ statement. But again, that's not really the purpose of the different statement. So we're just going to leave it there and call it manually like this. And that's pretty much it. That's how you will create your first property wrapper. Now I can go ahead and create a customer structure, but you can create anything you want. And what we are saying is that the customer code, which can be anything, a string, it will always be uppercase. So instead of writing code over here, we can simply go ahead and set the upper property wrapper, the one that we just created earlier. This means that any time the customer code is being set, it will always be in uppercase. So let's go ahead and now try to use it. So if I go over here and create customer, and I will say customer, and I can pass in customer code, let's say ABC. Now if I go ahead and print out the customer code, you will see that it is automatically be uppercase. Now, if I want to change customer code and I try to change the customer code from over here, customer code equals to X, Y, and Z, then it is going to tell me that we will need to, well, let's go ahead and actually even print out. There we go. And as soon as I try to do that, it will say customer code is inaccessible due to its protection level. And the reason is that we haven't really created the initializer. So this particular property, even though we can use a constructor to set it because it's going to fire out the default constructor 
of the customer structure. But in order to set it outside of that, we will need to create a customer code or a particular initializer. There we go. And now using that, we can go ahead and run the app again, and we will be able to see that we are able to convert the ABC, which is the customer code originally assigned, and also XYZ, the customer code assigned later on, to uppercase letters. So this is the whole point of using property wrappers. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another example of property wrappers and how property wrappers can be used in a different scenario. So in this case, we'll be using the user defaults. And this example is inspired from an amazing post by Swiftly website. And I'm going to post the link right over here so that you can refer it. There we go. Okay. So we're going to create a property wrapper for user defaults so that we can simply create a constructor or sorry, a structure. And in the structure, we can simply say that this value will be coming from a particular user default key. So basically the final output that we are looking for is that we will be using our setting structure. And in the setting structure, we will create a user default. That's the one that we need to create, which will take in a key. So I will say is dark mode. And I can pass in some sort of a default value, false. Var is dark mode, boolean, something like this. All right, and it can be boolean like this also. That's perfectly fine. So this is the output, kind of like what we are looking for. And whenever we are going to be setting the is dark mode to true or false, it is automatically going to update the user default settings. But currently, this is not really going to work because we don't really have anything called user default as a property wrapper. So let's go ahead and create a property wrapper for user defaults. I'm going to go ahead and start with property wrapper, struct, user default. Now the user default can work on many different types. So we are going to make it generic so people can pass in whatever type that they are investigating. It can be Boolean, it can be, you know, string, it can be anything. Now one of the things we need is a wrap value, but apart from that, we will also need the key. We will need also the default value. And we will need the container. So right now, by default, we're simply going to say we're going to use the user default standard. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a property wrap value. Now this property, once again, is required for the property wrapper to work. And now we can go ahead and say, get the value and also set the value. So getting the value, it's going to be quite simple because all we need to do is to say container dot object for key and the key is provided. And we will simply go ahead and try to cast it to the value. If it's not available, then we're just gonna use the default value. So that's gonna be the simple part. The setting will be a little bit more complicated. Now. Setting the most common thing you can do is simply say container dot set and a particular value, which is new value because we are inside the setter. So we have access to the new value and the key is already provided to us. So we can use the key. All right. Now this is perfectly fine and we can actually start using this. So let's go ahead and see that how we can use this. There we go. And now if I want to go ahead and use the settings or construct new settings, I will simply say settings equals to settings. And settings dot is dark mode equals to true. And now we can go ahead and print out the value. So settings dot is dark mode. Let's see what dark mode value does it print it out. So it prints out true. And the good thing is that, that this value that we have assigned is actually coming from the user default or going to the user defaults because that's what we did right over here. So by using the user default property wrapper, we have simplified a lot of our code, as you can see, just one line. 
and the property wrapper is the one that's doing all the hard job. Now the setting over here is not perfect because what we want to do is to also make it available for optional types. This means what will happen if I have a boolean which can be nullable or optional. So what would I do in this case? I mean, somebody can actually pass a value of nil. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that if somebody passes in a nil value, just like I'm doing it over here on line number 34, then we will simply remove that particular key from user defaults. That means you're kind of like trying to delete that. All right. So how can we accommodate that issue? The problem with that approach is that we need to find out that if the type is optional and if it is nil. So if it's optional and if it's nil, then we can go ahead and do something. But how do I find out if a particular value is actually of type optional? I mean, we can't really do that. Uh, is optional. That's not really going to work. So what we need to do is there are many different ways, but what we can do is we can extend the mirror class that is available. And mirror API that is available in Swift, it allows you to do reflection, meaning if you have a particular type, you can find out all the different properties of the type and access all the different values of those properties. So we're going to extend the mirror and we are going to create a new, which it is optional and nil. So that's the class, uh, that's the function that we're going to create. And we're going to pass in the instance of a type value. And it's only going to give us Boolean, meaning true or false. We will get access to the mirror. So mirror equals to mirror, passing in the reflect, reflecting the type. So this is the instance. So now, now the mirror can have all the children, all the properties, all the values of this particular instance that we're passing. The only thing we are checking over here is the mirror.display style is actually optional. And also, we are also checking that if the mirror.children.first.value is equals to nil. So this means that the type, so this part basically means that the type that you're passing or the object that you're passing is actually optional. And the second part over here is checking that whether that particular type is nil. So now we can use that type, that particular mirror function in our code. If mirror dot is optional and nil, passing in the new value, if it is, then we will also check if the container contains the key. But now the question is, how do I find out if that particular element or, you know, key is contained? Uh, you can use object for key, but I think it would be a much nicer solution if we create a extension on the user default. So extension on user defaults function contains key, which means you can simply pass in the key. And again, this is simply going to go ahead and return you a boolean self, which is user defaults object for key and pass in the key if it is not equal to nil then it means that it contains a key all right now we can go back and we can implement this if container which is user defaults that contains the key uh, let's go ahead and write it again if container dot contains the key and the key is the one that we already have then container dot remove object passing in the key else in this case we are simply going to go ahead and set the value all right and that's it now let's go ahead and give it a try keeping in mind that now we have boolean as an optional so let's go ahead and see what happens if i go ahead and do this if i run this you will see the first time we run, we get the optional of true, that's fine. And the second time we get a nil indicating that this particular is dark mode now no longer exists. So the key doesn't even exist over there. 
So you can see that the property wrappers in Swift language has definitely helped you to minimize a lot of code. And we start seeing these property wrappers throughout the Swift language now. You have the add state property wrapper in Swift UI. You have the environment object property wrapper, environment property wrapper, binding property wrapper, right? I mean, you have a lot of different state object property wrapper. So a lot of different property wrappers being introduced. So it's always a good idea to take a look at this, how these property wrappers actually work. And it will also give you an idea if you're using a lot of dit set and set and get a lot of different places. Maybe it's time to look at the code and expose all of that repeated behavior as property wrappers in Swift language. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have courses ranging from Swift for Intermediate Advanced Developers to Combine, Swift UI Cookbook, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces, Testament Development, Mastering Rx Swift, Core Data, MVVM Design Pattern, and much, much more. So definitely go ahead and check out all the links that will be in the YouTube description. Check out the videos and please use the links to purchase these courses. That really helps in creating more content for YouTube and your support is always really appreciated. Thank you so much.